Yeah, excellent, excellent. We hey, everybody. Um, I guess Mike will will let everyone chime in if if we want to do that. But can anyone see my screen, Mike? Can you see the screen there? I can see okay. it. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about me, and then because that's what we do here. But we're also going to talk about the trusted referral network because it's all about that R, right? The referral. So uh, that's what I do for a living. I spend a lot of time making referrals, getting referrals, giving referrals. So that's why Michael and I um, are madly in love with each other um, because I admire what he's doing and we're already doing the same thing. So the concept here is around what I do for a living and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into this giving to getting concept that, that you guys are all participating in, right? You're, you have to believe that it's great to give and then you're gonna get in return. You do it holistically and you experience it and now you're a convert so either you're doing it or you're not. So, so th this is what we'll talk about a little bit today. It's about really the habits that the TRN, or the Trust Referral Network, um, is trying to incorporate into its own business model. To, so, so we are all more likely to refer uh, the services that, that you're seeing here, um, the people that you meet here, and finding referrals for them is about believing in it, number one, but also mechanisms to actually facilitate those connections. Um, and that's key to what Michael's doing with his new database that you guys might have or not heard about. And he can talk about that some other time when the time's doing, but those are the mechanisms that will facilitate these valuable connections that we wanna make within each other. All right, so just a couple of quick things about me so you know where I'm ranting from. Um, my name is David Cutler. I am a uh, sales and marketing guy that decided that you know what? It's much better to be able to help other salespeople um, be great at what they do. So I help with marketing strategy and sales tactics to B2B emerging technology startups and small bit mid-sized businesses uh, or disruptive companies within uh, corporations. So a lot of small teams I'm, 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 I'm really big at and they're trying to sell something new and interesting. And I love to help them do that. And I do that in a couple of ways. Uh, one is with um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, or, or teams, but for person-to-person -person sales. So we can tap into the funnel machine, the sales machine, the, 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 the programmatic and all that wonderful inhuman stuff that, that is getting better and better these days and frankly more inhuman these days. I am concentrating on when a human being is talking to another human being or a team or selling into a, co a company and there's a whole ecosystem of, of considerations. And that's where my value comes to play because I'm helping them increase performance by discovering each prospect's reality right? The true situation. Um, what's, what's their motivation at that company? What's really going on? Not what they're saying on their website or what they're telling you in the meeting, but what is that? What is the, what are they really looking for? What are they really looking for personally for their for themselves, for the, the buyers themselves, the division, the thought leaders, the, the influencers. I love mapping that out and finding out what's really going on because I get to find out what's really going on and then find out what's the best match for them. So again, I connect to close. That's kind of the mantra. Uh, David Cutler, davidcutler.net. Give me a, give me a look. Ask me the hardest questions that you have about sales and how to break in and do virtual and online sales these days. That's what I do. So with that being said, that's where I come from, you know, decades sure. of doing this stuff. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were you were uh, switching to a Q and A, but you're not. Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to just set something up really quickly because sure. what is inside that is I'm making the connection now between TRN and what I do. So Perfect. I'm not going to go into detail with this. This is just data that you guys know. Um, referrals, 63 percent of, of of success for marketing leads. Trade shows, email marketing. They're on the right hand side. You know this, you believe this. And the left-hand side is about how events have been stripped from us. So now this in-person trade shows, which was 39% of engagement, but it was the number one conversion, 53%, it's gone. And what are we doing about that? And, and TRN is one thing to do about that. It's a different way to network, right? So it was LinkedIn. So it was Lunch Club where Mike and I met. So there's, there's a situation where you have to get more online and get good at it. So how, you, how do you do that? And here's some high points that we can talk about. I'll be really quick because we can talk about this later. You can look at this later, but I can just give a general overview of you about what I have found works for referral thinking. And it's about actions and reactions. Simple as that. Do stuff, right? Do stuff that is referral minded. Act like you are a referral uh, co company. 
when you introduce yourself to people, say it, say it out loud and live up to it. Right. And it's simple. It's not as simple as that, but you got to start somewhere. So you start, start talking about, Hey, we're a referral based business. How did you, how did you hear about us? If they're a customer? Oh, great. You heard about it from Jenny. Well, you know what? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to give Jenny a deal. We're going to actually give her a kickback. And if you don't want to have that, that is, that that's, funded, then maybe we're going to make a donation to a nonprofit that Jenny is interested in, because that's how we roll. We love the fact that Jenny introduced her, uh, us to you, and we want to help Jenny out personally, professionally, as a company, or as a society. So those are the kinds of things that you need to start talking about. And frankly, Michael, we will start talking about it on TRN as we build in these, you know, R is one of your acronyms, right? Uh, one of your words, and how we're building those mechanisms into not only the database, but how we're connecting people. Um, so act like you are a referral uh, a referral kind of business. So you earn it that way. Um, uh, reciprocity is, is, you know, yes, it's a bit like the mafia because you owe me a favor and I owe you a favor, but it's also how people net weave each other to each other um, and keep that in mind. Uh, second, pretty obvious, ask for them, but be, be very specific about the referral um, and, and make sure it's at the right time. So if you did something great for your client, what a great time to say, would anyone else you know need this? Because we're good at it now and, and we did, did it with you, we've proven it with you. So now is time when the iron is hot, but there's another element to that after your client does something good, find out your connection to that, whether it's you were on the team, you were a part of it, you just were aware of it and you wanna amplify it, great. That does them a service too. But now you're getting some, some associative or borrowed interest in that. And if you are connected to that success on their part in any way, make it your mission to do PR for them and promote it and talk about it. And now you're doing a white paper on how that worked. So ask for it ask for referrals, but also do them and, and add those into the, the mechanism. Last but not least, it kind of ties it all together. You got to feed the beasts. Um, the beasts are the human beings that you're working with. And you're going to track, test these campaigns or this content that you're going to fill into your conversations. Test it for shareability. Design things that are shareable. Design it so they can not just like it on a LinkedIn, but it's written in such a way that they can forward it and it makes them look good. All right, it sounds like a pretty straightforward thing to do, but people never do it. They're writing it from their point of view. So now this is my point. If Jenny introduced us, right, this fictitious Jenny, I uh, was just talking to her on the phone, that's why. Um, she introduced us and I wanna help Jenny do it more because she introduced me once, she's gonna do it again. How do I remind Jenny how great we are? Well, give her some insights, whether you're analyzing and revealing helpful industry insights, now she can, to take that and be smarter, but, but also if it's designed properly, you've given it what I like to call handles. So she can actually get credit for it. She can pass it along with pride. So she can, she, her, the mechanism, she doesn't have to rewrite it in, in, in the first person. It's written in the first person for her to be able to use. It's a very interesting trick, but if you do it, they will do it. They will, they will do what you want them to do and they will look good doing it. And they'll, take as much credit as you'll let them take and right there powered by you, you know, something in some, you know, some element that, that ties you into it in some way. Um, and you're not really trying to get broadcast. Jenny is going to refer you to an individual person that she's going to send to. So she's okay with your name being, you know, in the, in this insight that you're sharing or something like that. Um, so there's a rapid fire because it's a long conversation of high points to get the conversation going on. Not only how TRN is planning on making it easier for you to refer people to, to, to other people and other grow the flock, so to speak, but also to get business out of it. Um, and if there's any questions, you know, we can, we can dig into the things that I said or any questions that you guys have about it in general, but just as important, what TRN can do with this kind of referral thinking. So David, um, so that was great. You have five, uh, six minutes left. Can you uh, describe sort of your ideal client and what you're looking for? I'm looking for B2B companies. Mm -hmm. um, mostly it's technology because I believe in the exponential opportunity of digital and this transformation stuff we've been talking about. Digital transformation has been going on for, for you know, I don't know, 40 years if you're counting it, 50 years, but in the last several years more so. In the last year or two, it's been really ramping up with artificial intelligence and machine learning and cognitive computing blockchain, enterprise blockchain, um, stuff that I actually have a handle on. Um, and my, my job is to tap into those 
transformative technologies that are coming, whether you like it or not, the robots are here, right? So how are you going to how are you going to how are you going to control the robots versus them controlling uh, controlling you? Well, people like me help translate ways to use it, you know, the right vendor to deploy it, the right idea and, and, and marketing tactics to use it and sell it. It meaning these new technologies. So technology driven companies are who I like to help, um, and and their and their clients, which people like 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 this. So that that's disruptive technologies might be a bit dramatic. Uh, but it's it's my sweet spot. So B and can B &B you give us a specific B &B. example of, of sure, what you've done sure. with a client? So there's there's a company that has a very sophisticated um, and complicated enterprise blockchain, not cryptocurrency, um, an enterprise blockchain administration pro uh, portal and services. So they re-architect the supply chain of companies, and they brought me in to work with their their new senior hire, this guy that had 30 years experience in the oil and gas industry. And I have no experience in the oil and gas industry besides pumping, pumping gas into my car, which I don't even know what happens when I do that. But I'm working with Chris Smith, who's got a great Rolodex. He knows where the bodies are buried. He, he's an oil and gas guy, but he's a sales oil and gas guy, but he's not a technology sales oil and gas guy. And I can help him translate those elements to help tell a story. And he and I argue or converse all the time on how to take the, the mindset of his industry and this opportunity. And uh, it, it's a lot about what one of the elements is not just having a good simple deck and, 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 and dialogue that's, that's coherent and really designed so people can actually get credit for it, like I said before, but also when they when you finish the presentation, they're talking about you and they understand it. So it's very, very complicated So by, by communicating in certain ways. So one example, uh, which goes back to my other example about feeding the beast is we created, he, he's, he's talking to people all the time, all these different oil and gas companies, the operators, the guys are pumping gas, and he's interviewing them about what they're dealing with and what their priorities are and how the oil gas is going to hell in a handbasket, but it's not if you're doing it the right way and making more efficient and using tools like he's selling these, this new inf infrastructure, this blockchain based infrastructure. So what we did was he, these interviews, we turned them into insights and he's packaging them up in direct emails saying, here's something that you can share with people in your industry and people down the hall that need to make decisions. And it's not just self-serving. It's about what's going on. And it's brought to you by Nuarka, this company that, that works on this, has this technology, so, but it's brought to you by Chris Smith. So he's getting into it. The company's mentioning it and everyone he sends it to, they get to forward it along and make them proud, you know, about sharing it with their network. And it's directly related to new business opportunities. Um, uh, and I've been doing it for about seven months with them. And we have like 20 new conversations and five of them are doing pilots. And um, um, of those five, three never even heard of them before because just came through a referral. So it's working if you believe in it and you feed it, feed that beast with the right kind of information that really, here's the message of the whole thing. Just make it easy, easier for other people to do their job and if your, your message is part of their job, make it easier for them to actually communicate that. Um, don't make them work it. Don't give them homework. Just, just write articles for them, right? Um, it's probably the smartest thing that we could all do, Michael, is you know, you know, write articles about everyone here could write a post on their own for their own brand about what you're doing. And I mean, you, you, have, you have a minute left. Anybody else have a question? So you can pop them in the chat. Or just speak up. Just wanted how to do, give people. Do, um, David, are you going to be sharing your presentation with us? Oh, sure. I can make this deck. I've, that I, there's great. a link of it. Yeah, that's fine. And there's, and there's yeah. Well, so, again, just to reiterate, can you just repeat? Um, actually, Bryce just put the question in that I was going to ask what size of company do you usually work with? And what are the specific, like, if you had to list the top three questions or problems that people, come to you with, what, what might they be? So I like working with smaller teams because they don't have a lot of, um, let's, let, let's call it Dilbert in, involved with it. So um, I work with the bigger, I've worked with big companies. I've Anheuser-Busch and Pepsi, they've been clients of mine. And I've 
lucky enough to work in the innovation lab. So that's where the pirates are. But when I get stuck into the, the grander elements of those companies, it kind of drives me crazy. Um, so smaller, disruptive uh, co companies and teams. So here's um, a list of the questions that I asked that they, 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 they use me for. Um, do they have core systems? You know, if they're starting something new, disruptive technology, they need core systems, pretty straightforward. And I can help them integrate with a, an agency and look, working in these assets. Um, how, are they, how are they accommodating new methods? I ask all the time, what are you doing because of COVID? How have you changed? How's that going for you? Um, is, it, is it working? Uh, are you uh, accelerating with the changes that are going on? I think the, the society has proven that it can change pretty quickly with COVID. The question is, can they change on demand, meaning there isn't death involved <laughs> there's or, or mandates or you know, government control, they can do it on their own. So the, we're getting these muscles to, to change. And I'm right there saying, great, now you're forced, you can change, people all go home, well, let's keep changing. Um, that's that's that right there, uh, Julie is probably the best definition of my, what, the, what the question they need is, listen, we're, we're, you know, we're doing different stuff we need someone who thinks different, kind of like you, but also knows that sales is sales, you know, marketing is marketing. So I can't be just disrupting. I'm just looking for the disruption that they, that, right. that, that changes uh, the, the dialogue from what the hell are we going to do to, oh, this is what we're doing. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right. So we're, we're out of time. So let's. Uh, Thanks. You know that what? was fun. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I, hope I, hope I, didn't I can talk faster next time if you guys like. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um. What you can do, David, are you on Slack, on the Slack uh, workspace? I do, yeah, sure. Um, so you, you're part of the your trusted referral network. You should have gotten an invite. Yep. You can post your presentation there, um, maybe in the general, a link to it, or the or the presentation itself. Sure, sure. All right, so let's get go let's get started. We'll, get, we'll have two minutes for everybody. We have two people who have to leave early. Uh, so I'm going to ask Robert Weiss to start. And I will hold on. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. The yes. first time ever I'm going first, you know, usually in the back of the room with the last name of Weiss. Yeah, hold on. Uh, <laughs> let me. Uh... Whoa. And there's your dog. All right. So now we're going to close this and I'm going to switch to gallery view. I'm sorry. Okay, Robert, you're up. All right, cool. Um, hey, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to join, but uh, I'm still Robert Weiss. And uh, video, 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 video. That's what it's all about, right? You have the business objective. You've got all these different business objectives. Video plugs into that, and that's what we do. Uh, we've been doing a lot of shoots remotely with uh, our, our app that goes on to these and we uh, coach and we can capture up the 4K footage for thought leadership that turns into SEO, that turns into content for emails, that turns into content for blogging, and there's so much more. So um, this is what we're all about um, when we're not uh, shooting on location, which we have a full crew, we do remote stuff uh, in a COVID economy. So that's about it. Thank you. And uh, I should probably be on for another like five or 10 minutes. So to waiting for a call, so I apologize. I need to, to jump early. Oh, that's no problem. Um, you still have a minute left if you want to talk about something recent or. No. All right. Uh, all right, uh, Jason, are you still on? Because Jason actually has to leave before Julie. Yeah, <laughs> before the minute. I, nine minutes, right? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll go quick. I'll do this one minute. It's fine. So, Jason Cement, I run an agency called Get Visible. We have offices in Scottsdale and in Los Angeles been doing online stuff since in late 1990s, if you will. And we do two things. We build websites. So either WordPress sites or commercial sites like e-commerce stuff, and then we get traffic. So it's either search engine rankings, running advertising campaigns, or doing the social media stuff. We generate content uh, like blogs, infographics, social media posts and stuff like that. And the last thing that we do is reputation management. So if you have a client that's got some bad news on Google, we get rid of it. And um, that's my agency. I do a lot of work with uh, lawyers, service providers, technology, and e-commerce. So that's it. And, and I just want to add, add 
right into that. Uh, I had a conversation with with uh, Jason last week. Really, really smart guy. Really knows his stuff. So I was actually quite impressed with uh, with his knowledge. So you just yeah. saying that because I hired him. <laughs> no, I'm not. I have a lot of calls with people that don't know nothing about what they're talking about. You know a lot, so. Well, to throw that there. And yeah. it has nothing to do with the fact that Bryce Wade is uh, is on the, uh, uh, I guess, image, the Batman image behind Jason Cement. I was just going to say, <laughs> what is that behind you? That looks. That so is cool. a Batman puzzle. That's all the characters from the 1960s show. Wow, well, I like that. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, Julie, you said you had to leave early too. Yeah. Good hi, day. everyone. Good to be here. Good to meet all of you. I know a few of you from before, um, but good to be here. Mike, thanks for inviting me. I have a public relations uh, consultancy called Want Leverage Communications. It's at wantleverage.com. And we help under the radar businesses to get noticed, to um, amplify their key messages, which in turn help them to get media coverage and drive web traffic and at, at many junctures increase their sales and open up open themselves up to new opportunities like speaking engagements and strategic partnerships. We do a lot of that through media relations. Um, that means that we, we know the media intimately and we are able to, to position our clients as either thought leaders in their particular industry sector and we get them covered in the news. So newspapers, magazines, digital media, podcasts, websites, uh, online uh, blogs, et cetera. And that coverage really elevates our clients. It puts them in front of millions more eyeballs than they would ever get. And it really uh, showcases, as I said, their thought leadership, their, their knowledge, um, and that starts to really elevate and position them as an industry authority. We also work with a, a number of family owned businesses. So businesses that are sort of flown under the radar for years. We have, I have a client now that's an elevator manufacturer. They've been in business for 50 years. Um, have sort of flown under the radar. A lot of companies in their space know them, but in a few years, they're gonna wanna sell their business and they want it right now, they want, to, they want to increase their visibility and brand credibility so that when the time comes to put their business up for sale, they'll have that, they'll already have that industry recognition. So again, it's wantleverage.com. Um, I'd love to set up one-on-ones with, with any of you. If you're interested, just email me. I put my email in the chat. Yeah, everybody should uh, put their uh, LinkedIn or email in the in the chat, and you could uh, download that toward the end. Um, so let's go to based on how people showed up. So Audrey, Angela, and then Charlie. Audrey, you there? Okay. Hi. Sorry, I couldn't get you my mute button. Audrey Glover Dictor. I'm an attorney. I'm a solo practitioner in South Florida. And I focus on advertising, marketing, promotions law, intellectual property law, and privacy law. So I help small and medium businesses, agencies, entrepreneurs, startups be legally compliant with their marketing. And as you know, it's crucial to have a website nowadays. So everybody and anybody who has a website is technically advertising nationally and internationally. So these three fields of law being national law, federal law, they do apply to everybody with a website. So I review the campaigns and I help you um, be legally compliant. I start off with the FTC, Federal Trade Commission law, because that's always our main umbrella. And then depending on your business or your service, it depends what else I bring into it. Um, so I also help businesses make sure that they have their intellectual property protected, particularly before you launch. Um, also for entrepreneurs and startups, I try to explain to them that they need to have this IP clearances before they pick the name and, and start a whole branding based on a name that they don't know whether or not they can use. Um, unfortunately, I had a client who had to rebrand after eight years of being in business because never did legal due diligence with that regard. 
So yeah, I got a phone call saying, hey, I want to do my trademark from my logo and my website and then and I'm like, okay, well, guess what? Somebody else has it and you can't do it. So that's part of what I do. I try to save you time and money with that regard. And I'll, hopefully I also try to save you, you know, try to minimize your legal risk for false and misleading fraudulent advertising claims or challenges or lawsuits, or of course, IP infringement, or of course, privacy violations. Thank you very much. I'll put my information on chat. And if you need me, you know where to find me. Cool. Angela, then Charlie, and then John Patch. So what do you do when your Brazilian porn star doesn't show up for the TV shoot? Hmm. <laughs> sometimes you need crisis management and sometimes you need crisis magic. And that's what I do. Here's some of the rabbits I pulled out of a hat. We had a tasting for, an, for a cheese company and Hurricane Sandy hit in the middle of the tasting. So there was no one to feed the cheese to. We turned it into a corporate social uh, uh, benefit and, and got great PR out of it. Leonard Lauder, I worked for Estee Lauder. He hated every headline they showed him for six months until they called me and I fixed it in one day. Paulina Rubio, we were launching a fragrance for her and the music company wouldn't let us use her hit. So I tricked them and they did for the price of stock music. And of course, COVID. My Yale client called, I thought, I have education clients, they're completely safe. But of course, COVID happened. So of course, the first thing I did was create a go, no go list for them, telling them exactly what budget they had spent, where they could cut, what they could do without. And I got them through the summer. And you know what? They made their highest yield ever. They made $5 million last summer in the middle of COVID. So that's what I do. I solve problems that nobody's seen before and nobody knows what to do with. I'm Tempo Strategic. I'm Angela. And uh, call me if you need a little magic. Definitely. So don't forget to connect with Miss Magic. OK. Um, Charlie, you're up. Can I follow another act? No. <laughs> that, was, that was a great one. Wow. Um, Awesome. I'm Charlie Wentmore. Glad to be here. First time. Uh, and uh, so my stories, I, I'm going to back up a little bit quickly, but I, uh, I grew up sort of fell into a family business as a teenager uh, with my father. We um, built a, um, a family winery and restaurant. Um, and I literally was, it was uh, very hands-on. So I was an entrepreneur in a small way from early days. And then uh, later on, I fell into the internet in 95 and was lucky enough to join a crew and we built a very successful startup into a company that was big enough to interest Barry Diller. And so he purchased us. We became, Ask Jeeves purchased us first and then Barry bought Ask Jeeves and we became part of that whole empire. And, um, and then when I came out of there um, about seven years ago, I got the opportunity to, to actually run the winery and restaurant uh, by myself, which I never thought I would get the opportunity to do. So. For the last uh, seven years or so, I've been uh, been running that, and uh, it's been quite a ride. Um, and I, along the way, I did a few other things, um, but I am now uh, sort of ready to get back into the game. And I'm starting to look uh, look around because the small business stuff is fun for a while, uh, but uh, I'm ready for some some larger challenges. But I think what's interesting about me at the moment, as far as you guys are concerned, you know, one of the things, um, David, I worked on was uh, if you're still there was a, um, <clears throat> I've, I've been advising um, a, a software test company called Webomates. Um, and uh, it's run by a very sharp guy, founder and CEO. Um, and in my humble opinion, he could definitely use some sales help. Um, my name would probably get you in the door and get a conversation going, whether he'll listen to you or not is a whole nother. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it would do, it would be good for him to listen, but um, many CEOs and founders prefer to do things their own way. Um, but the other thing is, you know, the um, that's interesting is the, um, it's just in terms of referrals. Um, so I'm in this funny situation, the restaurant actually, um, won two stars from the New York Times in the early 90s. So we have this kind of high-end reputation for the restaurant. 
but it's very difficult to run restaurants as we all know. And um, if oh, we lost uh, Jason, I was going to ask if you could help me out with some trip advisor issues. <laughs> you should definitely follow up with him. I, I, I'm going to have to cut you off because we, we okay. have it at, at two minutes. Um, I'll, okay. I'll put this up there. If you see it um, or hear it, that's a good, that's, that's a signal. Oh, is that what that was? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So John, then Loretta, and then Regina. John Patch, you still there? Let's see if he's still there. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, John Patch left. Loretta, are you still there? I'm still here. Um, so hi, nice to uh, to say hello and see everybody. Um, I am, um, as I'm listening to everybody talk about what you're doing, and unfortunately, I'm what I'm doing is trying to figure out what I'm doing. Um, and I've been doing it for a few more months than I'd like to, and it's not really very much fun to do in the middle of a pandemic. It's a much more challenging than uh, at the, uh, I, this is actually, which I would not have guessed has been much more difficult than the recession was. Um, but I, um, I came, I, I sat in today specifically because tomorrow I've been talking to someone for several months who is a sales director at a um, in a, at a dot com that's in the uh, health category and he and I have worked together previously um, and um, I've never I have worked in positions where I've been at ad agencies which people sell all the time but it's a different type of sales um, and I have been in strategy positions within sales organizations working with salespeople, but I've never been the lead salesperson. So I wanted to hear what David had to say today, which I appreciate and was very interested in and very interesting, um, hoping that I may end up um, doing that. And if not, I've actually been thinking about um, trying to set up a consultancy and trying to help um, sales organizations who need to understand the media process better because I think so many people that call on agencies don't really understand where they fit into the media plan well enough and get asked a lot of questions that um, at the end of the day they don't really know the answers to and so they go back and they give answers back to their agencies that um, don't really answer the questions that were asked, which was what I found in a couple of different jobs that I had within sales organizations was that they were not being able to get there. Um, and then unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm still talking to ad agencies because I just can't help myself. And um, for any of you who have worked in the agency world, you can look at me and know I'm a little bit mature to be um, going back into an agency, but there could be one. So you do the Luke Hasselhoff imitation incredibly well, Michael. He'd be proud of you. All right, cool. Uh, thank you so much, Loretta. All thank right, you. Regina and then Victor. Hi, everybody. My name is Regina Shanklin, and I'm a marketing strategy consultant. And I work ahead. I actually help companies launch new products, so largely in pharmaceuticals. So I help them identify the right targets, the right messaging at the right time to the right people. So that's what, that's what I do. And a project I'm working on now is in the oncology space and it's helping them size the business and looking at the net present value of adding, like right now the drug is a third line and then they're looking to try to see if it's worth doing clinical trials to get a first or second line. So working through that and their medical team and the uh, business development team on that. So that's some of the type of work that I do. Uh, my best prospects are directors or VPs of marketing. That's largely who hires me. And largely they are shorthanded when they're trying to launch a product. So that's, uh, that's what I do. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, that was Regina. Now Victor, then Larry, then Gary. Hey, hi everybody. I'm Victor Lee. And uh, I've been in the digital media and marketing space since the mid nineties, probably almost as long as, uh, as, as Jason, who I think has ducked out. And uh, I, it just struck me that I think Julie Livingston also has stepped away. But in, in my business, cutting the cable has an entirely different meaning than it does for Julie's elevator client. So I guess for us, it's a good thing for them. It's not such a good thing. So anyway, what I'm doing now is uh, in the digital media and marketing space is I'm helping my connections monetize their connections. So I have a number of companies that I work with and I, I find them clients. And then I also talk to folks in my network 
to see if they have connections that can be helpful. So uh, for example, I, think I've, I had a conversation with, with uh, so right now we're working on a product that's for people who are working from home or who are traveling, now that traveling is starting to open up and they need a safe and a secure internet connection. So we have essentially a super hotspot app that connects your phone to your laptop and we use the unlimited data plan on your phone for internet access. So in terms of our outreach, uh, you know, this group has been great. So Michael is on the system, uh, Audrey is on the system, uh, Jason, who who's, has left, is also on the system, and people have been giving us great feedback, both in terms of, you know, our marketing materials, the, the onboarding process for new customers, because we certainly need that, as well as, you know, introducing us to potential clients. So that's definitely a conversation I'd be happy to have with everybody here, both how can I help you with my connections and whether you know anybody who would be interested in our product. And then what we, you know, our arrangement is we just, you know, we split the commission with whoever uh, gets involved with us. So it's Victor Lee and I'll be reaching out to, I think mo most of the folks that are here I, who might don't already know and would love to have a conversation. Thanks. Thank you, Victor, good timing. All right. Um, Larry Joseph, then Gary, then Dave, uh, no, David already went. So uh, uh, that was Victor, Larry, then Gary, then me. Victor, one day we're going to connect. <laughs> We've been trying. I'm Larry Joseph. My company is Takeoff Products. I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. I am a longtime provider of branded marketing collateral to business. Uh, what that means is I can do any kind of branded promotional product, wearable, print, packaging, you name it. Been doing it a long time. Guys, it's, it's holiday season coming up, and a lot of you have not been able to see your clients, and your clients haven't been able to reach out to their clients. So I can help you if they're you are they are considering doing some branded holiday gifting. That's right up our alley. Uh, the other area that we're is keeping me very busy right now is PPE, as you can imagine, especially with the second wave hitting. Uh, this was not my order, but this is a face mask that one of my factories has done for Google with a uh, filter. It's a three-ply mask. I, this is my own branded uh, spray for, uh, at, you know, 90, I think it's 98 for, no, no it's 60% uh, alcohol uh, to wash your hands. So any type of PPE that has branding, I can help you with. Um, we're building a store site currently for actually we're, we're displaying it on Friday to a large real estate client of mine who has 36 uh, multi unit apartment complexes around the Philadelphia area in South Jersey and Florida. So uh, each uh, item, each part of the swag will have uh, their branding on it and the property managers can go and order it for their prospects or what have you. So you know, I've been doing it a long time. Love to help you out with any ideas you may have. Charlie, I've done some restaurant work in the past, so love to talk to you about that as, as well. Cool, thank you so much. Okay, um, Gary and then uh, Bryce. Oh, I almost forgot Bryce. So Gary, are you still here? Uh, it's, it's good to see everybody. It's been a few weeks. Uh, I think I've been very fortunate. It's been really, really busy. And a lot of times during this time of the year, it's really slowing down. and somehow there's some good things. I think during this time, um, there's a lot of companies because everything's moving to the web that are really investing in more infrastructure, better infrastructure. We're getting a lot of business. So our niche focus is organic search with large companies, Fortune 100 to 500. And where we're doing a lot of work is really managing and implementing new platforms and making sure when they go from one platform to another, they have a fast recovery of their organic traffic and they really are set up strategically to take all the benefit of the technology of the new platform to kind of go one plus one equals three from an organic search perspective. Obviously, everybody's sitting at home. They're all on the web more than ever. So data-driven content and optimization to drive organic traffic is really more important than it's ever been. Um, we've also, which I've shared with some people that it pertains to, we also built an artificial intelligence uh, SEO platform, basically that lets you write and rank in real time. So it's for content writers. So if you're writing content on the web, it will let you know how the content's gonna perform before you publish. 
It's one of the first of its kind. It's got patented technology. So uh, it's my pleasure to send anybody a free link to download it. In fact, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, but we've been very fortunate during this time. And uh, yeah, just uh, staying focused. And you've already connected with Angela, right? She's downloaded it, I think. Was yeah. Angela? I'll put a link in here in case anybody wants to give it a test drive. Thank you so much. OK. Uh, and then Bryce, and then I'll go. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Michael. And uh, Gary and Victor, let's, uh, let's definitely talk, because uh, I also do uh, SEO in a number of different ways. Um, our mantra is, and what, what, uh, what David showed in his presentation there is 36% um, um, people go through organic searches where a lot of leads come from. So that, like, like Gary, you know, we, we've been quite focused on that as well. Uh, we've got a couple of really unique and, and cool solutions. Um, we, we really like to work with other marketing companies. Um, so we're more of a technical marketing agency. Um, our focus for my sales team, I basically run our sales team, um, is the um, service-based industries. So like HVAC, plumbers, um, roofers, stuff like that. Um, that's kind of our, our B2C facing side. And then our B2B uh, facing side is other marketing companies, other ad buying agencies, stuff like that. Um, we, we work as a, a supplement and a support um, to the endeavors that uh, other companies kind of do. Um, and I'll kind of leave uh, one, one of the examples of one of the things that we do um, in the chat, basically called News SEO. Um, so basically, if you're in the news, um, Google picks you up like that. So we kind of developed a way to, to really leverage the power of being in the news um, and really take it to a, a, an incredible degree. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to connect with other people um, to, to talk about organic or some of the other kind of unique solutions that we've developed, um, but I don't have enough time to talk about it here. So I look forward to chatting with, uh, with any and all of you. You got 32 and, uh, seconds. Uh, Michael's a great guy, just super good guy, <laughs> just really the, the best guy. <laughs> yeah, if everybody used their last 30 seconds just to say, say that sort of thing, I won't turn, I won't stop you. Okay. <laughs> Um, so uh, I will go. Um, my name is Michael Bendit. Uh, you may have noticed that I'm halfway to the priesthood. No, I had some surgery and uh, doing okay. My voice is a little bit strained because I had some tonsils removed, um, but all is good. Um, my business is software development resources. I represent about 10 different software development teams and we bring sort of that technical capability to marketing and to startups. Um, I work with a lot of agencies that don't always have those internal resources at hand and need you know, somebody with an expertise in like mobile development or Shopify or some sort of e-commerce platform and don't always have that in-house. Um, uh, so best leads for me are in fact, digital marketing agencies, but also startups that don't know where to go uh, and to find the right teams at the right cost. Uh, a lot of the work that I do is with my dual shore teams, which means that they have a few people here, but most of their resources are offshore. And so you get the benefit of that cost savings, but you don't have to deal with the, the complexity of dealing with overseas and time zone differences and cultural differences and potentially language differences. Um, so in fact, I got a, a referral last night from a member uh, of the Trusted Referral Network, Jason Kramer, who's not here today. Um, so he shifted his business, he used to do design. Now he does marketing automation, but he has an old client that decided to actually implement the website he, he actually designed. And the team that he had uh, you know, fell off the radar. So uh, hopefully we'll be doing that for him. Um, I'm gonna stop here because my throat is a little bit strained. Um, but uh, if you guys wanna stay on and just chat about anything in particular, any questions, um, you know, raise it up. I'll I'll switch to gallery mode.